Hi, welcome back to another video about antispies. In this video, we are going to discuss the full wave rectifier. This one is based on the half wave rectifier. I used the formula that we derived in that video, so please refer to that video if you don't understand what the formula we have here in this slide. In this video, our focus is the full wave rectifier. First, I will want to introduce the circuit and then the signals that we obtain from the full wave rectifier circuit and also the question, the very common question related to this full wave rectifier and how can we solve that. And then we will use LTSPICE to check our calculation. So this is the circuit of our full wave rectifier consists of the AC voltage source the ideal diodes, the capacitor, and the load. And this is, these are the signals that we have from the circuit. The blue uh, dashed line is the input signal that we measure at this point, and the red signal is the signal that we measure at the output point here. Okay, when we look at the red signal, we could pay attention that there are two processes first process is the charging process and the second one is the discharging process. In the charging process, first let's look at this period first. The charging process happening here involves with the AC voltage source. First, the current will go through, will go from the positive sign of the AC voltage source, go through the D2 and then go through the capacitor, also the load. But let's not consider the load in this picture to make our main emphasize on the charging process more clear. So the current will go through the capacitor and then it go through the diode D3 and go back to the negative sign of our voltage source. And when this charging process happens, the voltage on the capacitor will start to rise. It rises until it meets the peak voltage 10 volt of the input signal and when it reads the 10 volt voltage of the input signal at that moment the circuit will switch it will switch to the discharging process in the discharging process the rectifier circuit involves only the capacitor and the load in that case the capacitor will provide the current going through the load until a point where the charging process happens again here but in this charging process the current doesn't go from the positive side but the current will go from the negative side of the AC voltage source go through the diode D4 and then part of it go through the capacitor C1 in order to charge the voltage on the C1 and then it go back to the diode D1 and go back to the positive sign so this is the charging process in the other like negative per half period of our input signal and again the voltage on the capacitor will be charged to the peak voltage 10 volt and when it reaches the peak voltage 10 volt the circuit again switch switch it to the discharging process the discharging process involves only the capacitor and the load again and the circuit will repeat and repeat. So the question usually related to this full wave rectifier is that we need to calculate or estimate our ripple. The ripple is the magnitude of this transient in the red signal in the output signal. If we are given with the input signal with the peak voltage 10 volt and the frequency is 50 hertz, the capacitor has the capacitance equal to 100 millifarad. The current going through the load is approximately constant 10 ampere. We need to calculate the ripple based on here is the very uh, necessary formula that we need to calculate our ripple based on those given information and the value of the delta voltage on the capacitor, the gen like the accumulated voltage on the capacitor is uh, dependent on the capacitance, the current going through the capacitor and the time needed to create such a accumulated voltage on the capacitor. 
and this value is the value of our ripple. So we already know about the value of the capacitance, the current going through the capacitor, because we are given with the current going through the load. So we can consider the circuit in the discharging process to calculate the ripple because if we calculate the ripple either in the charging process or discharging process, we will obtain the same result. And because we are given with the current going through the load, no information about the current going through the capacitor in the charging process. Consequently, it's better that we choose the discharging process to calculate the ripple in that case. So in the discharging process, the current going through the load is also the current going through the capacitor. That's why we have the current going through the capacitor here, IC equal to 10 ampere, and the time needed. Let's look at the discharging process here. Discharging process here. It starts at the peak, the positive peak of the sinusoidal signal, and then enriched here is the end of the discharging process, which is very close to the negative peak of the sinusoidal input signal. So we can estimate that the time that we needed here is from the negative peak to the po the positive peak to the negative peak. So it's one half of the period. So one period is one over the frequency. One over 50 is one period. And one half times one over two. In total, we obtain one volt for the ripple on the capacitor or the ripple of this output voltage. So let's check our simulation. Uh, in order to know what are the dials, what what how like how the dials work in this simulation and how to simulate this circuit with time domain analysis with trend, please refer to my previous videos. And also, in order to understand half wave rectifier, we can you can also refer to my previous videos. I will put all of them in the comment section. So let's. Let's go to the main focus here, which is simulate the result and check with our theory. Okay, I put our calculation, our prediction, of the ripple value here in order to check with the simulation. Now let's measure our input signal. And this is the output signal. The V is the output signal. Let's attach some cursor, attach to cursor and let's move and then we could see let's let's measure the ripple in the charging process it will be the same if we we'll, if we measure in the discharging process the ripple value are the same so our ripple value is the difference between the two cursor in the vertical direction in the vertical direction which is 788 millivolt very close to one volt so our estimation can be considered as correct and uh, this is the end of the full wave rectifier because we already solved the common question related to full wave rec rectifier and the next i just want to emphasize about how to simulate this full wave rectifier in edgespice if you choose the model of the diode are not ideal diode, for example, like the diode start to conduct at the forward voltage around 0 0.7, then you will see some difference. I will demonstrate it here. Let's do this. I will use the parameter function in Edgespice. If you want to understand what, how to use parame parameters in Edgespice, Please refer to my previous videos also. Everything is done. Okay, let's say it will have the name forward and I will simulate it with the step command. The name of the parameter is forward. I will use list. For the first value will be the zero, the ideal forward voltage of the ideal diode and the second value I will demonstrate with 0 0.7 this one let's say also 0 0.7 and then let's do the simulation again run 
measure the input and measure the output. We don't know which graph belong to which case, so select step. First, we see our ideal case where you could see that the peak voltage of the capacitor reaches the peak voltage of the input, which is 10 volt. But let's see the case when the diode is not ideal. The diode starts to conduct at 0 0.7. Okay, let's attach one cursor to the output, which is the blue. Go to the peak and then attach another cursor to the input signal. Move it to the peak position and you could see that the difference between the two cursors in the vertical direction in the vertical direction is around like 0 0.7 volt which is the forward voltage of the diode where when the diode we choose in the case of 0 0.7 volt for conducting for opening the diode for conducting the current in the forward direction which is 0 0.7 volt so if you want to have almost like an ideal signal on the rectifier in the simulation, pay attention to the model of the dial that you use. So that's it. And thank you so much for watching the video. If you find the videos is helpful, please give me a like or subscribe or even leave a comment if you find something wrong or anything. Thank you so much for watching. See you another video about maybe anti-spice. Thank you. Goodbye.